Grill with USDA fresh boneless ribeye steaks, $19.99 per pound. Whole red ripe seedless watermelons, $14.99 each. Freshly baked hamburger or hot dog rolls, $3.99 for a package of eight. Select varieties of 59 ounce cartons of Minute Maid Punch drinks, $3.99. New 7.5 ounce box Bubby's Hawaiian Mushi Premium Ice Cream, $8.49 for select varieties. Visit our website at www.marketplace.pm for more superheroes holiday specials. You're watching Bermuda Tonight. It's Friday, June 14, 2019. I'm Diane Brewer, and thank you for joining us. Topping our news, sponsors of the island's first ever gay pride parade have reacted to themes on social media calling for a straight pride parade in response. The online group known as Out Bermuda, who are sponsoring the August 31st pride parade in Victoria Park, believe proponents of a straight pride version are simply missing the point. To Rye Trot spoke to Out Bermuda Deputy Chairwoman Zakea Johnson Lord. The the pride pride event is something that the community has been asking for. I do think that celebration is important. I think visibility is important. So I would say that it's significant, particularly for the LGBT community, but for everyone as well. What do you say to opponents of same sex marriage who see same sex marriage and the event as an alternative lifestyle that's being forced upon Bermuda, as they say. Uh, a pride event being forced on Bermuda uh, in marriage? I think that the pride event is, is a separate issue, to be honest. I think the community is, is a, uh, an umbrella. We're trying to celebrate the LGBT community and trying to celebrate Bermuda and the diversity within it. I don't see when individuals who may not may not be mainstream, so to speak, or may not be represented in the wider population, I don't think that when they attempt to celebrate their the, identities, that that is an attempt to force anything on anyone. A number of people have taken to Facebook to represent what they say is their straight pride in reaction. Should they be proud of their heterosexuality? I mean, I, I think people should be proud of, you know, whatever identities they choose to claim. Um, in terms of a straight pride march, I, I think that's an interesting frame. Uh, to be honest, to, to want to want something just because someone else is asking for it is interesting because it, it, we're not saying they shouldn't have it. I'm just saying they don't need it. Like they don't have the, the you know the heterosexual community, the straight community hasn't had the occasion to need to proclaim their identity. Despite achieving legislation outlawing discrimination on basis of sexual orientation and rulings from the courts upholding same-sex marriage, Al Bermuda maintains the battle for full equality is not yet over. I, I didn't know, I think, that the, the ways in which people choose to discriminate or the ways in which um, individuals within the community have access to equality, I don't think that that is over. Um, I do think that this is one, one front. One place in which we um, are winning, but we have not won. I mean, let's be very clear. We still have, you know, the Bermuda government is still pushing against even the wins that we have. So, no, I would not proclaim us as, as the battle being over. I think we have miles to go before we sleep, but that this is worthy of celebration, but also that the members of the community are worthy of celebration and the ways in which they are getting to lean into themselves and getting to feel as if they are no longer less than simply because of their sexual orientation. In other news, Premier David Burt made a pledge to commit resources to addressing the issue of unaddressed trauma in the community while recognizing its impact on the overall community. Mr. Burt was attending the Bermuda ACES conference when he made the remarks. Jasmine Patterson has the details. Adults living with unaddressed trauma negatively impacts not only the individual, but as well as their employers in the form of lost productivity and increased expenditure on health care. Premier David Burt, in his opening address on day two of the Bermuda ACES conference, pledged the government's support to address the treatment of ACES. But there's one thing of which we have to note, that the support services of which we offer in Bermuda are not enough. And our system of social support is under stress, whether it be to mental health, <laughs> the care of our children, and also making sure that we put the resources in place which are necessary to 
keep those ones who want to continue to help in place to make sure they do so. According to the Premier, the Department of Education data shows one in four students within primary four to senior one year levels are potentially at risk or at high risk of flunking out due to unaddressed trauma. Another key address was made by Mark Cloutier, whose visit was made possible by the U.S. Consulate. Mr. Cloutier is a public health and policy expert who gives some examples of treating ACEs within the population basic school practices that um, work with kids, for instance, who are having behavioral problems to identify whether or not it's trauma, to get appropriate treatment, to not treat those children in a harmful way, um, to reduce school discharges, for instance. Um, lots of kids who have behavioral health issues end up getting kicked out of school, which only exacerbates then their ability to learn and their ability to get a job later in life. Elsewhere, Dr. Bessel Van Der Klok, a Boston-based Dutch psychiatrist noted for his research in the area of post-traumatic stress, in a video address spoke on how to prevent chronic disease, in part by helping parents to provide a healthier environment for their families. What is very clear is that the single most helpful intervention we can give to people is to help young parents take care of their children. And that, that means really giving them every opportunity to get help, to get uh, support, to get babysitting, to get ways of calming themselves down. Because if the parents are able to regulate their own arousal system and their own um, capacity for mutuality, of being there for each other and tolerating each other, then the kids benefit and the kids become calmer also. The Premier pledged to make funding available in the very near future through the Social Development Committee to fund community homes to fill the gap in services. The government is currently in the process of selecting members to carry out its mandate. Jasmine Patterson reporting for Bermuda Broadcasting News. Thanks, Jasmine. Well, coming up, an update on Caroline Bay celebrating our national heroes, the latest weather news and so much more. Stay with us. Want a race? Rubber Duck Derby 2019. Raffle tickets now on sale. Bring the whole family. Presented to you by Friends of Hospice and Linda's lead sponsor. When you try the new tempur Breeze, you'll feel how it helps you sleep cooler. So no more nocturnal baking or polar ice cap air conditioner mode. Because the tempur Breeze transfers heat away from your body. So you sleep cool all night long. Experience the superior cooling comfort of the tempur Breeze today. Enjoy the world's finest beds at Furniture Walk, 12 Harvey Road, Paget, 292-5209. Ford Get Ready Box, Cloud DVR Storage, more local channels on every device in your home. Get more with Fiber Wire TV. Welcome back. Well, Caroline Bay Limited, its board of directors and board chairman Brian Dupro announced today that it has entered into an agreement which will provide the financing to continue construction of the Caroline Bay development. A spokesperson telling us since the outset of this project, our commitment to and confidence in Caroline Bay has been steadfast. We appreciate the patience that our construction partners have shown and are grateful for the ongoing cooperation and assistance of government. We look forward to continuing the work 
work at Caroline Bay. However, the spokesperson gives no further details about this latest financing agreement on Thursday. Finance Minister Curtis Dickinson explained that government was working with the developers to ensure the project continued. Mr. Dickinson stated then that the developers continue to seek financing for Caroline Bay after work came to a stop in recent times. Elsewhere, the spokesperson also does not give any indication as to when work will resume at the Morgan's Point location. And as you already know by now, Monday is National Heroes Day, but there's plenty of events to enjoy over the weekend, so says Minister Levita Fogo. Ms. Fogo, who is the Minister for Labor, Community Affairs and Sport, spoke with us about an important event at Penno's Wharf to celebrate the island's national heroes. On Saturday, we will have family members of our national heroes come down and speak about their service. Uh, we wanted to do this in this sort of manner to allow the families to further pay tribute. We've chosen to have the event on Saturday because I think, as you are well aware, there are many events taking place throughout the island during this entire weekend. And here's what we can expect at Saturday's commemoration. Well, in particular, the, the event that everyone wants to be at will be happening down in St. George's at Penner's Wharf. It is intended to be outside, but should weather not permit, then they will have it inside of the Heritage uh, Museum down there. And um, the whole intention, again, is to pay tribute to our national heroes. We will have a, a singer musician there to, I guess if you will, give it the energy and the atmosphere that we would want to have it. It will allow persons in a very informal but meaningful way to be able to share special qualities that made their loved ones who are named as national heroes stand out. Turning to weather news, showers headed our way for the weekend. Let's go to AccuWeather headquarters for our holiday weekend weather forecast. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. The BFNM Insurance Group is pleased to bring you tonight's AccuWeather forecast. I'm AccuWeather meteorologist Brittany Boyer, and I hope everyone's had a great week. We've got some rain on the way, as you probably saw already today. We've had some showers in the area, and what we essentially have is a slow-moving frontal boundary that's going to be slowly uh, moving its way toward the island here, and that is going to make for an unsettled time as we head into the weekend. So heads up if anybody has any kind of plans of doing something outdoors, just a heads up for you, you might be running into a couple of showers and possibly even some thunderstorms as well. So looking at a closer view of the radar, we've already had some showers around. The most persistent rain, again, is just off to our west right now, and that is slowly going to move our direction. Winds have been coming in out of the south-southwest here, so it's been another humid day outside. Temperatures in the low 80s, and, well, that's exactly where we still are right now. Temperatures in the low 80s, humidity right around 80 percent, and it is a little bit breezy out there, again, with that wind coming in out of the south southwest about 10 to 15 knots the water temperature is currently 81 degrees and marine conditions i have to say really are not bad at all inside the reef around one foot and outside between two and four feet the takeaway though is trying to find some time to get outside and also uh, be able to enjoy maybe going out to do some fishing or heading out to the beach because it is going to be an unsettled stretch of weather here. So we've had the showers around this evening already. We will have the showers around tonight. Also a sh uh, some showers and maybe a thunderstorm possible on Saturday. I'd say if there's one of the two days that you have to pick out this weekend that's going to be more wet than the other, that looks to be on Sunday. We will have some wet weather for a period of time and also even a few rumbles of thunder as well. So that's why I said maybe not the best of times to be out doing some fishing or what have you here. You can see our tidal times. We don't have any marine alerts to fill you in on, but just know if you are going to be outdoors, if you hear thunder, lightning is close enough that it can strike you and lightning is a deadly thing. People die every year from lightning. So we don't want to hear of anybody getting into a bad situation this weekend. Overnight tonight, we will have those showers around. It stays humid with temperatures in the 70s and and then here we go into tomorrow, a humid day, showers, and also a thunderstorm around with temperatures in the low 80s. As we look at the Caribbean outlook here, very similar setup. 
A lot of humidity, warm temperatures, upper 80s, low 90s for Jamaica, Barbados, and also into Trinidad. Nothing's brewing in the Atlantic right now, so we at least have that uh, to be happy about here. If you're doing any traveling, you can see into Saturday, a beautiful day in New York City. Also Boston, Miami, Florida, and London looking wet and unsettled there. Here's our extended forecast again this weekend. It is going to be uh, the time that you try and dodge the showers and thunderstorms. We'll have a few leftover showers into Monday. Temperatures staying into the low 80s through next week, possibly drying out by Tuesday. AccuWeather was presented by BF&M Insurance Group. My name is Kevin Roberts. I'm a taxi driver slash ambassador. My father's with BF&M, so am I. My, half of my family always been seen to be with Bermuda Fire Marine. I tried a different provider at one time, but I wasn't too happy with the competition because what then it took too long to settle claims. They questioned every claim, and I never really had that problem with BFN. I'm quite happy with it. You are watching the Friday edition of Bermuda Tonight. Well, around 100 students from BHS Work Academy and Saltus Grammar School protested on the grounds of the Cabinet Office today to voice their concerns for the environment. Jasmine Patterson reports. Student protesters armed with placards marched through the streets of Hamilton today. They made their way to the cabinet office grounds to demand action on climate change. Outside the office of the premier, 15-year-old BHS students Elias Donge and Katarina Rant said they were inspired by similar action overseas carried out by young people. Our first main goal is to get Bermuda to declare a climate state of emergency. Um, second, we want to legislate a target for renewable energy, at least in the next 20 years. And third and most foremost, we want Bermuda to ban all single-use plastics and styrofoam. Yeah, because they've only been, they're trying to ban only plastic straws and plastic bags, and that isn't enough. Teachers were also there to support the students and their goal. And at BHS, we're doing a leadership initiative in trying to empower young women on the island. And it's called the Eileen Framework. And the students have been so powerful. And they've actually led themselves and organized this with all the other schools. They've got B-Solar on board. They've got Best on board. And it's the students leading themselves, so it's fabulous. An online petition is calling for 70% of Bermuda's energy to come from renewable sources by the year 2040, which has the support of solar energy supplies retailers B Solar. Having all the students come out today is an amazing showcase of, of what they want to see for their energy future. It's very possible. We have the science. We have all the technology. We now need government to step up and uh, make sure that they make this part of our legislation moving forward. Several energy plans are before the regulatory authority for review. Premier David Burke greeted the students, thanking them for expressing their views before heading to another engagement. Regulatory Affairs and Energy Energy Minister Walter Raban then fielded several emotive questions from the crowd. Phase one is plastic straws, plastic spoons, plastic um, um, utensils. That's the part of the phase one. What about size? Yes, a ban with there, but we need to do it in phases because I want people to be comfortable. That is the plan, and you'll hear about more more about phase one in due course. There are still plastic straws. Yes, I know. Why are you allowing so And we are moving. You will hear. You will, you will hear more about the ban on plastic. You will have more about the ban on plastic straws in the next upcoming months. I promise you. Jasmine Patterson reporting for Bermuda Broadcasting News. Thanks, Jasmine. We now toss it over to Earl Basden, who's in Costa Rica for the Concacaf Gold Cup with the Bermuda team. Earl, what are the conditions like over there in Costa Rica? Well, Diane, it's overcast. It's been like this. It's the rainy season, so we're anticipating another night of full rain. Uh, it rained, torrential rain, last evening. It started mid in the afternoon with the team training, but overall, they know what the conditions are going to be like on Sunday. Torrential rain. Well, hopefully the weather conditions will improve. So, Earl, how is Kyle Lightborn feeling about the upcoming tournament on Sunday? 
Well, Carl Lightborn is pleasantly optimistic about uh, how the team will get on. I spoke with him earlier today at the team hotel. Yeah, I think we're training well. We're done, you know, all the stuff that we need to do. We just need to, to just now taper down and um, get the final preparations and, and, and nail down the team that we, you know, are going to start. Uh, pretty much made our mind up on most positions and just one or two positions left. But we're, we're pleased with the way trainings develop over the, the course of time here. Will the weather play a factor in it? Because we, did, we had all that rain yesterday. Actually, looks like it might have another downpour today, making the field that much softer. Yeah, it might have a factor in it. Um, the, the pitch that we've been training on has caught up quite easily. Um, players have had a little struggle keeping their feet, especially on the soft turns. But it's something that you know players have to adjust to. I think it's going to be both uh, for both teams to have that same problem. Um, but you know the weather, we're used to the rain. Um, you know the the conditions that we played in against El Salvador. That's the type of conditions, without the wind, you know, that we had in, in training yesterday and a day before that, I think. Um, so we had a good mixture of rubber, sun, and we expected to rain. This is, seems to be the rainy season, and um, you know, we'll get along with it. It's not too hot uh, when it when it when it rains, so the temperature is probably perfect for football. So we're we're happy with that. And I will have more with Coach Kyle Lightborn later in sports. I'm Earl Baston with Bermuda Broadcasting News. Thanks, Earl, and go Bermuda. Well, Earl will have more sports after this brief commercial break. Stay with us. Save a dollar on imported iceberg lettuce, only a dollar ninety-nine each. Save two dollars on fresh Atlantic salmon fillets, sixteen ninety-nine per pound. Save two forty on select varieties of Shoprite lactose-free milk, only three ninety-nine for a sixty-four ounce carton. Package four double rolls Charmin Ultra Soft from Strong Toilet Tissue, four ninety-nine. Save three dollars on Uncentia purified water, eleven forty-nine for a six-pack of one-liter bottles. Have a happy and safe Heroes Day holiday from the Marketplace family. More gear ready box, cloud DVR storage, more mobile channels on every device in your home. Get more with Fiber Wire TV. It was five days before Christmas. I will never forget that. I went for a regular 20 week checkup to see how the baby was doing. They said, Your daughter has a half a heart. Her heart is. Damage beyond repair. And I'm like, are you sure? Are you sure? And she said, yes. There's nothing we could do to help your daughter. New York Presbyterian Hospital said, yes, we'll take her. And yes, they did. We knew that Jana would need a heart transplant. Dr. Badger actually said, you have to do the three surgeries to give her a fighting chance. Everybody else gave up. They never gave up. I would tell the entire New York Presbyterian Hospital. You guys are our angels. You guys are always there for Jenna. Now Earl Basin has tonight's sports report. Coach Carl Lightborn says he would rather be a player than a coach at this time in his career if the rules were reversed and Bermuda was playing in the Gold Cup some years ago. I'd rather be a player than a coach any day. I think, um, you know, as a coach, it's more time that you put in. As a player, you just turn up and, and, and play. You have to perform when they, you know, work constantly. This is 24 hours of, of, of thinking of different ways of, of playing, different ways of, of, of stopping teams playing and so it's constant you know uh, the players get to go to the room after training and, and they may be in the room or someone else room playing cards and relaxing where the coaches are, you know we had a meeting we didn't finish until one in the morning the other day and it, it's you know it's constant for us and last night we said no we need to take a break no no meetings um, let's just get our, our, our rest and 
come back today and you know we're, we're, we're gearing up for training now. The Bermuda Cricket Board selected the under-19 national cricket team that will represent Bermuda in Canada in the ICC Americas World Cup qualifiers for 2020. The team will be led by Dalen Richardson with Jaden Manders as the vice captain. The team also consists of Jamar Stovell, Nairobi Smith-Mills, Sharai Painter, Ty Carey, Tybray Robinson, Keith Worms Jr., Kevin Sunga, Ori Wilson, Sancho Jackson, Jabari Darrell, Jared Richardson, and Isaiah Greaves. Three Bermuda Sailors, Magnus Ringstead, Sebastian Kemp, and Christian Eben began competing in the St. Thomas International Optimus Regatta. The team finished third in the day's team racing. The Bermuda boys then took to the iconic Parade of Nations, which officially kicked off the 2019 International Optimus Regatta. The Bermuda Triathlon Association Super Sprint Thursday Night Series enjoyed yet another great session on a very hot and humid evening. A total of 46 athletes were registered with 15 youngsters taking part in the shorter race, which consists of a 100-meter swim, 3.5K bike, 800-meter run. 21 athletes, including some juniors, took part in the 200-meter swim, 8K bike, and 1.6K meter run. Tommy Marshall won the longer distance race with a time of 23.05. Karen Smith was second in 25.58, and finishing third was Clive Langley who clocked 26.32. Harrison Fleming won the shorter distance race in a time of 18.33. There were plenty of goals scored in the latest round of the Bermuda Netball Association Summer League season. A triple header produced 127 goals in total at Bernard Park last evening. Rain defeated the BUT teachers 23-18. Jasmine Renfro would once again lead Rain to victory with 15 goals. Sonia Townsend scored 15 goals for the BUT teachers. The Extreme Sports Scholars defeated the old kids on the court 29-9. Micah Pond scored a game-high 12 goals for the Extreme Sports Scholars, while Charlie Bridgman scored all nine goals for the old kids on the court. The final game of the night saw the Phoenix Flames defeat the BA HB Angels 31 to 17. Ebony Burgess scored a night high 25 goals, while Charlene Bogle Gomez scored 14 goals for the BHB Angels. Rayshon Birch competed in an international horse jumping event in Germany. Birch and Stakai 4 finished 9th competing in the Class S with a winning round class. They clocked a clear round time of 73.46. Jordan Slayton competed in the 2019 GAA State Championships in Archery. Competing in the Compound Cadet Male Division, Slayton finished third with a score of 612 points. Several footballers from Bade's Senior School, including two from Bermuda, have currently competed in a series of high-level tournaments. Najee Smith and Jaden Eben traveled to represent Bermuda at the CONCACAF Under-17 Qualifiers last month. David... <laughs> Price Rate is your one-stop shop with something for everyone. Household goods for kitchen, bedroom, and bathroom. Aisles of bulk groceries at value prices. A complete selection of fresh meat and produce. And an extensive range of frozen items to cover every meal. Wine from around the world and beer and liquor at discount prices. Visit Price Rate at our two locations in Pembroke and Warwick. There's always something new and always something for everyone.
That's our newscast. I'm Diane Brewer. Thanks for joining us. Best of luck to all the Marion to Bermuda sailors. Hope you have a safe ride across. Have a fantastic holiday weekend, everyone. Good night.